Good day everyone, it's Tim AU here with the Core Keeper Guide. My top tips for new players. The sixth one's my favourite, as it made exploration so much more fluid. So let's kick things off with number one. What to spend your early copper on. So, the first copper tools I made were the hoe, and then the watering can. This allows you to get a farm up and running early, so you can grow food, rather than having to forage for mushrooms or go fishing. I created my character with the warrior background, and that meant I started with a copper sword. If you picked another background, I'd recommend getting a copper sword now. Following a sword, I would round out the tool set with the pick next, and then finish off with the fishing rod. You should ignore any tools that your character might have started with. Moving on to number two, how to get an infinite source of wood. As you explore, you will likely come across root seeds. They can be found by killing mobs, digging up dig spots, or from breakable objects. If you plant these seeds and let them mature, they will spread wood randomly. You can then cut the wood, leaving the main plant alive. There is, however, an issue. If you plant them too close like I did, they won't grow. To get around this, plant them on their own with large spaces between them. This gives them plenty of room to grow and spread wood without impacting on the other plants nearby. Eventually they'll start to look like this, with wood sprouting out of many of the plants ready for harvest. Number 3. Salvaging and repairing items, easy mode. At a salvage and repair station, you can salvage old unwanted tools. In exchange you will receive scrap parts. These scrap parts can be used to repair other tools. The item that is salvaged seems to have no bearing on the amount of durability restored by the scrap part made from it. This means you can make wooden tools and scrap them to make scrap parts for your higher tier tools. Speaking of repairing, let's move on to number 4, on the go repairs. Since you can pick up crafting tables, you can take them with you. This means you can bring a salvage and repair station with you and some scrap parts and you can repair your tools on the go. Here, we can see while I'm mining my pickaxe runs out of durability. I can simply move away, put down the salvage and repair station, and then repair the pick while I'm far, far away from home. You just have to remember to pick up the salvage and repair station when you're done. Let's move on to number five. Easy gap traversal. When exploring, I highly recommend bringing some wooden bridge with you. This will allow you to quickly span rivers and ravines with very little effort, and it's fairly cheap. Moving on to my favourite tip, number six, torch usage. If you have torches on your hotbar, and press the shift key, this will move the torches to your hand, allowing you to explore with a weapon still selected, but with a light source. When you run into an enemy, right click to place the torch, and then release the shift key to immediately switch back to your weapon ready to fight. You can see in the footage that I released the shift key, and my sword's ready to go. Number 7, NPC housing. As you progress, you may come across NPCs. You can move these NPCs into your village, by creating homes for them. To create a home for them, place a bed down and a wooden door on a building that is no larger than an 8x8 space. The first NPC we found was after defeating Glurch. This NPC was a merchant and Glurch dropped an item that allowed us to move him into our town. By placing the item in the house we'd previously built, he was able to move in immediately. You can prepare these buildings before you fight a boss so you're ready to go the moment it's defeated. Speaking of bosses, this brings us to number 8, defeating Glurch. Glurch is likely the first boss you'll come across. It is a giant slime, it attacks by jumping, causing damage to anything it comes in contact with. I recommend using ranged weapons, such as the slingshot, or if you're lucky enough to have one drop in your travels, a musket, both of which allow for good damage from relative safety. I recommend wearing at least a full set of wooden armour, or better if you can get it. If you want to fight Glurch in melee, 
then I highly recommend getting a Swift Feather. This is an offhand bit of equipment, which allows you to perform a short dash using the spacebar. This allows you to get out from underneath him as he's jumping, but before he lands. From the moment I got this item, I haven't taken it off. As you progress the fight, you'll eventually bring the boss down to low enough health for it to trigger its second phase. At the start of the second phase, the boss will change colour after glowing and becoming stationary. This is a good time to get some damage in before it becomes significantly more aggressive and faster. During both phases, the boss can also cross over gaps, so don't assume that it's safe to hide behind them. When the boss is reduced to zero health, it will go stationary and then start exploding before it spills that oh so good loot. Moving on to step 9, finding tin. Tin can be found quite sparingly in the first biome. The next biome is known as the clay caves and can be found to the east of the starting biome. In the clay caves, tin will be found significantly more frequently as natural generation in the walls is increased compared to the starting zone. The amount of tin generation seems to be on par with the amount of copper in the starting zone. As we can see above, there are two small veins within the same screen space of each other. And finally, our last tip, number 10, using minecart tracks. When exploring, especially in the clave cave biome, you may come across minecart tracks. These can be picked up and replaced wherever you want them. This can make traversal between biomes significantly faster and if you find them, they're basically free. On our world, we dug a single space wide tunnel, laid down some minecart track so we can easily traverse north to south. And that wraps it up. If you think there's anything worth adding, please comment below. If this guide was helpful, please consider liking and or subscribing and good luck out there.